Uh, now that's kind of one force is these managerial objectives. Um, we've got people looking for profits and we've got people who want to really make a change and shake up the market a little bit. The other side of this coin is uh, citizen perception. So it's, a, it's all of us in the room. What do we think companies should be doing? And there, there's been a sea change. Um, the most significant, when I go back into my own life, the most significant uh, kind of event that's, that reminds me of this is something in the 1980s. So this is a picture, this black and white picture here is a picture at Brandeis University where I went to school while I was at school. I could have taken this picture. Don't look at the date. <laughs> the, uh, it's a shanty town, they called it, uh, which was built of uh, cardboard and wood and things. And um, they, they did it as a way to protest the university's investment in South Africa. At the time, South Africa was still under apartheid. And Brandeis, along with other schools, Harvard, Vassar, uh, you know, a, a lot of the largest schools in, in the country, um, were really pushing universities to divest from South Africa until apartheid was abolished. Um, eventually, I, th I think it did have an effect. It's hard to say exactly, but that was, an, you know, one of many contributing factors that eventually led to the fall of it. Um, but this was, this was an example of consumers becoming very aware of their impact and their potential power to influence the market and influence what you know, they thought was the right thing to do. Um, we see this even more today, uh, where in some surveys, we have about four fifths of consumers say that they want companies involved in some way uh, in society. So if we look there, there's a 6% there that you'll see, which is people who say the purpose of business is profits only. 13% society should not be a priority, 13%. Add those together, that's basically the people that say companies stay out of it. Around 20% total. Now let's think back to the 20% of the CEOs that think that it's okay to get involved and those that think that they should not get involved and you'll get a sense of the mismatch and how far CEOs are behind. If they're that far behind, imagine what's coming in the next few years. Imagine what you're gonna see students here um, from companies in, in the coming years. I think it's pretty much unstoppable. Um, there's one other wrinkle to this. And that is that the views of people, this is just saying like, should a company get involved in society at all? But it doesn't say how. It doesn't say, you know, like the, the gun issue. There are people who say we should have less gun regulation and people who say that we have more gun and uh, regulation. So which one is it, right? In 1994, it was pretty easy for companies if they wanted to respond the market to just go in the middle. And here, what you're seeing here is a diagram of Democrats on one side and what their average views were, how left and how right their views were. And then the other one is Republicans, how left and right their view, how conservative or liberal their views were. And if you look overall, you get like this big mountain, the classic bell curve. That was 1994. If you're a company and you wanna to speak to these people, on average, where are you gonna go? Right in the middle. What's it look like now? This is 2017. Pew Research did the same, they asked the same questions. They looked at the same, the same data. And look what they find. They find two separate mountains completely apart. Now, this is interesting just in itself to see how, you know, the, how the country has become polarized like this. But now put yourself in the, in the shoes of a CEO trying to like market to these people. Where do you go? If you go in the middle where you did before, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. I mean, there's nobody there. It's just disappearing. It's shrinking disappearing. If you go to either side, then you're going to alienate the other side. So this is the predicament that CEOs are finding themselves in. Um, and it's because of consumer expectations are this way. So what, what I'd like to, to, to kind of impress upon everyone is that there's this dialogue going on between companies and, and consumers, um, where companies are talking about their expectations, they have their goals, consumers are looking at their goals, and they're coming together in some really interesting ways. And that's why I'm still interested in this years later.